Welcome to Tech Tuesday. Um, today we're going to be exploring the login for the Chromebooks and some of the GAF Google Apps for Education suite. So we'll just get started. Today we are going to be exploring the Google Apps for Education suite as well as how to access and log in through the Chromebooks. So when you first power up your Chromebook, you're going to come to this screen that is going to ask you to sign into your Chromebook that's managed by EDUC. So this is the first screen you're going to come across. You will need to enter your employee number if you're an employee or your student number if you were a student into that space. Next, you're going to come to a second sign-on screen. You're going to have to enter that email again. So your employee number or your student number at educ.dpcdsb.org, just like you were on the first page. It will look like this. And then you will go ahead and confirm your password, which will be the same password you use for all Duff and Peel logins. You will go ahead and enter that there. And you will be logged on to the Chromebook and you will land onto this home page. Logging in and out of the Chromebook will take on the user who has logged in. So whatever you do while you're logged in will belong to you. And once you log out, um, you will no longer see uh, what everybody else sees. You're going to notice that you have a couple of options down in the bottom left hand corner here. You have the first option is to access the DP Office 365 suite. Secondly, you have access to the Chrome browser and a search. When you click on to the search, you will come to a, a Google search, which automatically connects you online. On the Chromebooks, you do operate strictly online, so you will need to be uh, connected to the web for these to work. You will notice that you can go ahead and do a Google search, and you also have an icon there that says All Apps. And when you click on to All Apps, it's going to take you into the apps that are installed for you. You will be able to access the Google Suite and the Office 365 Suite. So by clicking on Office 365, it will take you to this familiar login screen. Well, you will use your same login and password, be it your employee number or student number. And you also will notice in the top right hand corner that you have access to add bookmarks. So just like any traditional web browser, you can go ahead and bookmark and it will create a list for you of bookmarks that will follow you from Chromebook to Chromebook as you log on. Once you are logged on, and I'm just going to flip so you can see that. Once you log on, you're going to see this screen here. And in the top right hand corner is where you're going to have your profile. So you can see here, when I click on my uh, icon here, it gives my employee number, my name, and my login. So I have that ability there. And what you're looking for here is this waffle icon, uh, familiar to you probably. And when you click on here, here's where you're going to find what you have access to as far as the Google Suite. So we will be exploring uh, different various options within the Google Suite for Google Apps for Education. And, and I'm going to start here just by taking you into the Google Drive. The Google Drive is your storage space, so it operates like your OneDrive in Microsoft. So here you have the ability to um, upload and save uh, files. You also can see here when you click New, you have the ability to create a folder. You can upload files from your devices. So if you happen to be working on uh, an iPad or, or a device at home and you wanted to upload something, you definitely could do that. And you also here can launch a new product. So if you're looking to start a Google Doc, Google Slides, and again, by hitting more, you'll get access to the other uh, parts of the Google Apps suite that you have access to. You'll notice just along the top here, you have some options to change your view of the files that you have in there. So you can either change that back to list view, you can organize them, and kind of arrange your settings in that way. So for the Google Apps for Education, the short form is GAF. So just to be aware that that does operate differently than your private Gmail accounts that you may have. 
So you definitely want to make sure you're using your school um, GAF account when you're saving anything with student information in there. Today we're going to be looking at an app called Google Forms. Google Forms is a great tool to use in order to create surveys and gather information. When looking at the Catholic graduate expectations, we're looking at three specific expectations that really fit the idea of creating surveys and communicating with one another. So one of them is really being able to communicate our thinking effectively. So what does that look like and, and what kind of questions and how do we develop these questions uh, in order to help our students become better communicators, as well as reflective thinkers and learning to collaborate with each other, possibly on the surveys, or with the, the content and information that we're giving them and how they use that information, what it looks like. So the great thing about Google Forms is that you can really enhance that learning by using this survey tool. We'll show you what that looks like. But when we're thinking about why we use Google Forms compared to any other survey tool that may be out there, one of them is the ability to create unlimited forms. Generally, with survey tools, you're limited to a certain amount, but here, Google Drive allows you to save really an unlimited amount. There's tons of space there. The other great thing about it is that results can go directly into a shareable sp spreadsheet. So depending on what you're doing, you can collect your data, you can filter it, you can then share it with students, you can analyze the information. The other thing is logic threading. So that's the ability to change the survey based on the answers. So just say the answer A, then they'd be directed to a, a subset of answers based on that answer. If they answered B, they'd then be directed to another subset of answers that were different from A. So it's that ability to send them in different locations. And most importantly is the ability to be mobile friendly and being able to use it from any device. We really want to uh, enable our students to be able to use this in, in different manners. So I'm going to pull out here and I just want to give you an essence. Come back here for a second. There we go. So when I first come in here, I've signed into uh, my Chrome and, and I've come to Google. And here you see that I have my little grid. And when I go into it, I know I can find my Google Apps here. Specifically, I'm looking for more here and I'm looking for my forms. So when I click into the forms here, it's going to bring me to this page. This page shows me uh, that I've already designed a few or I've opened up a few forms already. And these are the ones that are in my account that I've worked with. And it also shows me that I have the ability to work with a set of templates. So when I go into more here, I can see that I have some templates that would uh, fit my needs as a teacher. And it kind of gets you started. So if you're not sure where to start, you could go into this exit ticket. And as we open up, you can see that there's an outlay already for you that you can work with. So what you see is you see these little dots on the side. And as I go into here, I know that obviously I can move things around to where they need to be. But as well, I can add questions. So when I add questions, you see that I just press, press this little plus sign. And I can choose to do multiple choice. And as I open up, I can see that there is a lot of different choices here as to what I can create. Scale, grid drop down menu, check boxes so they can choose as many answers that applies, multiple choice, paragraph, or short text. So you see it's very varied in that way. But what's great about this is that I can also see that I can add images. So if I need to add things like my diagrams or I want them to look at a specific image and, and reflect on that, then I can do that. And I can also add in YouTube videos. So it's here that I can then create that. If I wish to do the logic threading and break it up, I would make sure to add different sections. So you can see that it's split up the section and then uh, I would choose for where things might go. So when I see here, this question here, I can see the three dots here. So much like uh, other places, the three dots always mean more options. So when I press on here, I can decide to go to section based on answer. And that's what we were talking about with the logic threading. So I can do that. I can go to the part 
for the answer and I can choose to go to the next section, section one, section two. So then they'd have to answer, if they answered this one, they would have to then go and answer everything in section two here. So you see how you can set that up and really design it. And you can really enhance it with the idea of images and videos and really sending them in, in different directions. So you can really personalize that idea of how you build your surveys. But when you're thinking of why would I use these surveys, besides the simple fact of maybe a quiz, how do we go beyond just the idea of modifying our quizzes online? What else can we do with it? So let's take a quick look at some things that it can do for you. So if you are filling in the forms, uh, one of the things uh, that it said we could do is the ability to create spreadsheets. So what you can see is I can have my answers and all my answers, uh, there'll be timestamps, so depending on what day it was answered, and I can see all of the questions up at the top of the form, so that, and then it collects all of my responses within the spreadsheet. Within these, I'm able to then filter and look at specific ones and be able to decide that I just want to filter and look at specific answers or I want to filter based on a specific date or a specific time, if it's a certain class that I want to center in on and take a look at. So you can really uh, zone in on what you're specifically looking for and lead your instruction or really focus on your assessment based on the answers that were given. The other great th thing here with Google Forms is that you're able to see a summary of responses. The summary of responses is not only in the idea of the spreadsheet, but it is now with visuals. So you see the idea of graphing and being able to see how many answers a specific amount. And this could also, in the same sense, either lead your instruction or decide on, on, on the assessment, depending on, on what the question itself was. So the purpose here now is to think, why would we use Google Forms? What kind of ideas might we think about when we are, are trying to build as, a, as an educator and what might that look like? So there's a few websites here that really help us kind of design uh, and, and give us ideas. So here you can see that we can use our Google Forms for professional development. So depending on, on what you're coming from, if you are working in, uh, you know, your consultancy or you're, you're wanting to know what your staff is looking for or you're wanting to do a lunch and learn for your staff. You might look and, and decide that you can come and get some feedback or you can get a survey of what the staff wants to learn and what they're looking for. So here it gives you that kind of idea as we move into here, something that's already set up that you can use. So this gives you the idea they were putting in the name or department or grade level and when you like your PD and what your goals are. So really it sets it up that you can see here and, and gain ideas for what that might look like. If I come back and we look at the idea from a teacher standpoint, you might have things like a parent survey, a science fair judging form. Um, we may look at a response to literature scoring form or grading assignments. Now, here's a great thing that I like to use is if I'm in the class and I want to, I'm going around and I'm looking at some of the, the stuff that they've brought in and I, I want to kind of have that anecdotal check over. So, one of the things I might do is have a form that I can input my assignments into as I'm walking around and grading them and what they're doing, I can be collecting that information into the spreadsheet. So I might have the assignment type, so maybe it's just they're working on a team task together in class and I want to focus on their collaboration or how well they're communicating. The assignment number, the group that they're in, possibly I'll have a, loose, a list of my student names in here with the pull down. Right? So I'd be able to put in the name of the student and then I'd be able to give them a score. And I would change this based on how I scored my students and what that looked like. And then every time that I went around, if I had, you know, a specific five children a day, I'd be able to go in, score them, and then collect this information on the spreadsheet as it went along so that I could see over time if they were growing or what I could do to improve uh, the instruction or the way that they're learning. So that's from a teacher standpoint. When looking from the idea of a student standpoint, we're looking at the idea of they can use it as a peer evaluation form. They're working in groups, they're evaluating one another. Uh, possibly 
we're looking at the idea of surveying the class after a lesson or discussion and what they're thinking. We talked about the idea of creating quizzes and tests, and that's one way of looking at it there. Self-grading and reflection, so really thinking about what they're doing and, and, and reflecting on how they worked in class or on a specific task that you gave them. Uh, one of them is composition writing. This is a different one that we can kind of take a look at. So if they're working on a specific assignment or they're reviewing or they're doing some research, they would talk about the name of the reviewer, their writing partner. So here you can see that they're reviewing one, one another's work, the name of their writing, maybe something that worked best, why they chose the sentence that they liked. So it, get, it kind of follows the through word. You can design something where you're making them think about what they're reading. So if they are assessing a particular assignment, you may kind of gear them towards what they're looking for. So ask them specific questions, and then you're gathering the information and, and what they're reflecting upon and what they're pulling out of the task that was given to them. So really, it's it's enhancing the ability to, to think through your work, to reflect, and to communicate what you're thinking. And really, from the administrator's standpoint, same thing. They could come in here and they can use it for teacher observation forms, whether it's a full visit, a five minute walkthrough, kind of seeing how things are going, how students are responding, and then really helping that to, to drive how we're, we're creating our school community and what it looks like. Sometimes it's hard to collect all that information and, and remember everything. So having a form and being able to fill out things really helps us, you know, collect our information, whether it be from a student standpoint, a teacher standpoint, or an administrative standpoint. Okay, so today was uh, to help you get logged on to those Chromebooks and see how you can access and get in there. And just to highlight one piece of the GAF, the Google Apps for Education, being Google Forms. So throughout the month, we will be highlighting uh, different pieces of the Google Apps for Education. So you can join us again next Tuesday. Have a great day. Thank you.